Okay, this is going to be the first attempt to test fire that. So it's a runner. Well, this is one of those motors I've put a fair amount of time into and to review. I've already put up on video, although I might put some snapshots replacing fuel lines, fuel pump diaphragms, stuff like that, but also the lower units water pump and that really isn't that hard but getting the lower unit on can sometimes be a little bit of a trick and I'll get into that now this boat we're working on is an old Chrysler Conqueror it was sort of a pseudo sport boat in its time it's not the best condition but it's not bad condition it's got okay floors a solid enough transom for now. We'll probably end up doing a transom on this boat at some point, but I think it's strong enough to run for for the season, you know. We're going to put some paint on it and get it in the water this year, I hope. Now, I happen to like these inline sixes, so this boat has been converted from its original Chrysler motor to one of these Mercury inline sixes. In this case, 125 horse 1250 which was only made for a pretty short period of time and I happen to like these because they have the older style fuel pumps and carburetors and stuff like that the newer ones like we have over here with the more modern coils and switch boxes and stuff yeah they're pretty cool I suppose but I've got a couple of them that'll be channel projects at some point in time this one right here is a runner got good compression good spark you know it just needs a job but where I was going is that motor right there is a 105 Chrysler. It's a four-cylinder instead of a six. And, you know, they're goofy. In their day, they didn't have the same reputation that the Mercury's did. The technology wasn't quite as practical, I guess. Here's that 115 again. Another one right here. That's a V6. That's an all-Mercury design. But one of the things that kind of happened was there was a blending of companies. When they started having financial difficulties, there were a variety of times that happened in the boat industry. And Mercury and Chrysler eventually ended up being under the same banner. And during the early years of that, there was some crossover where they took some Chrysler technology and blended some Mercury things and vice versa to come up with different models they thought they could sell. And since... This was the original motor for the Conqueror. I eventually want to get it back on. But there's a couple of pieces of the puzzle that I'd like to add that the original motor did not have. One of them was power, tilt, and trim. Kind of gambling a little bit. And every once in a while you see parts that come up online for cheap. And since I was looking for the power, tilt, and trim, I saw this Morphodite which came off a Mercury which was really derived from a Chrysler and it had some different technology but one of the things it did have was that power tilt and trim and the gamble here is I got this for next to nothing is that I can blend that Mercury branded part to this original Chrysler motor and at the initial glance when you start looking at the bits and pieces you know, I think you can. Take a look at these and the shape. And then do the same on the Chrysler. Clamps are a little bit different. But the relationship, the width, and all that is pretty much the same. There may have been a change because of the Mercury connection. You see how those are on the inside there? Um, this part right here with that integrated pump looks an awful lot like this one right here so I saw it and I grabbed it and one of the things I'd like to do is one of the channel projects is to see if I can put that part on the Chrysler and then take the Chrysler get it running and put it on that boat so why do you do stuff like this if you don't know the answer to that you obviously haven't watched my chainsaw channel 
and part of the theme over there is to get stuff for cheap and make it functional. But also what happens is you just get interested in stuff, you know, and that's kind of a personality flaw, I think. I've always liked the Murphys. Always have since I was a kid. So every time I see one that I can grab for cheap, I grab it. You know, I've got enough inline sixes now to, to you know, scratch the itch. And when I start seeing parts like this that might move one of my projects along the cheap, you know, the cheap hobby, I get them. And that's the point, is some people will think of boats as a status symbol and try to get the biggest, baddest, most expensive, flashiest boat you can buy. I just happen to like being on the water. That's really where I am. And being able to, for a minimal amount of money, get good, solid, old parts and build interesting things that are fun, that's kind of where I want to go with the channel versus be all correct and all flashy and all status like you know now I've got another mercury power tilt and trim for these inline sixes this motor here was equipped with one it's a whole lot more complex you can see the motor down there the remote pump and then it has uh, rams and basically you have hydraulic line from that pump to the rams that push the motor up and down which is really why I like this system right here because it's kind of enclosed and kind of compact, kind of neat. And the Chrysler itself was a fairly compact, simple motor. Maybe not quite as powerful and flashy, but they were simple and they were reliable. And you still see them around from time to time. And they could be made to run. We'll get into the theory of two strokes and why the Chrysler had a pretty cool design at a different point in time. but. That's what this channel is going to be about. You know, CS to CS. Chicken, uh, well, manure to chicken soup and having fun with the hobby for a reasonable amount of money. We don't break the bank and spend $20,000 on a, something to go burn gas with. This is one I've had since the early 80s. For me, I'm kind of a motor dude, so it's kind of easy for me to do that. Stack up on motors. But I'm going to tell you, it's a hell of a lot harder to find a solid boat for low dollars to put them on. While it's cool to get the motors, that's a runner right there, by the way. This whole boat right here is pretty close to being water ready. I just haven't had time to get it in the water. We've already done the water pump on that, and it runs fine, pumps fine, all that kind of stuff. There's some interior work we'd like to do, you know, seal up the floor and things like that, because it's right down the fiberglass. But I really haven't seen rot. The transom is solid. Stringers seem to be solid, stuff like that. And these were a pretty rugged boat from the get-go. But what I found, I guess I already knew, it's one of those things you just discover over and over again. To find a boat to put your toy motors on is actually a whole lot harder than getting these motors to, to run or finding a cheap motor to get on a boat. And... Um, this one here, the goal was to have a reliable running boat for around $1,000. And I've got 600 into the boat and 400 into the motor. So I don't think I'm going to make my $1,000, but I might make my $1,500. You know, it's got a decent trailer. Like I said, the boat's in pretty good shape. We're going to put some seats in it. Um, we got some seats from, from a Sea Ray. They're going to go into that boat right there. We're going to have to brace up the floor. It's going to get paint. It's going to get bottom paint. And what I want to do this afternoon is, is uh, get this lower unit sorted out and get the motor running with a hose and make sure we have both running and pumping. Now, one of the things I found interesting was Online, I was kind of checking out to see what kind of videos were available for these old Mercury's and lower units. And I found a bunch on how to change the water pump and pillars and stuff like that. And that's pretty basic stuff. So I don't really see the sense in reinventing that wheel. You know, it just, just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But when questions were like, geez, I couldn't get the lower unit on 
what do I look for? How did I mess up? I saw nothing online that was of any use at all on some fairly critical things about working on these lower units. One of them is simply the indexing of the gear shift. When you listen to the videos, they say put it in gear and then take the thing off and put it back on. Everybody prays that everything goes back together as it should. But what if you get a lower unit from a, one boat or motor and the upper from another and somebody had tested the gears and started clicking on the gears and you don't know what gear it was in. Now how do you figure out how to index that with some of the other bits and pieces uh, on these motors? And that's something you're not going to find online. So I figure I'll do a redneck version and, and cover it just a little bit. So, so there will be something on line to cover that subject right there because that's something that has stumped a lot of people almost stumped us now for a little backdrop a couple of things that are sort of design features of these outboards are about trying to keep things from getting hurt if a person happens to run into things with the lower unit okay and in particular what i'm talking about is the ability of that motor to tip forward so obviously when you have it in reverse you don't want the motor to be able to tip at all because you want lock just like that or if you let it tip when you put it in reverse it's going to pull itself right up out of the water you can have that big l on your forehead saying loser now conversely when you're in forward you really don't care if that leg is locked and the motor can tilt like this right and part of the reason why that is the way it is, is in case you happen to whack a stump or something underwater, it doesn't break up the transom, doesn't break up the lower unit. Now, the mechanism that locks and unlocks that leg is a combination of parts up in here, but also down here. The shifter actuates the system that releases this when it goes into forward so you can tip it up. It also locks it so when you go into reverse, we'll set it in reverse, it'll lock that leg so the motor won't tip as that propeller is pulling backwards and it's locked up like this. Okay? The bits and pieces which make that happen can sometimes cause a bit of a pain in the neck when you're trying to assemble a lower unit and I want to address that today just a little bit. While we're talking about that a couple of other little tips along the way. Now the drop these lower units on these inline sixes is the same as a whole bunch of other Mercury's. Is you have a couple of th nuts that you got to pull out of there you know and I believe there's a one nine sixteenths up in here somewhere. Yeah, there's a nine sixteenths back here, and then there's a five eighths, five eighths. That's a five eighths, and one on the other side, and there's a five eighths uh, nut up there on top. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is with my five eighths wrench, I'm going to drop that lower unit right down. So I'm going to start with uh, with these. And while I'm doing that, I want you to pay attention to these right here. Because when you put this back up in there, you've got to start twisting on these right here. You've got to put them on, install them, get going before that lower unit goes all the way up. Because once it's all the way up, you can't get those on. You know, that's another one of those little idiosyncrasies of Mercury's. And there's another one. And that is... Before you put your lower unit up, you can't put the big bolt that holds it down through that hole. It's too, the bolt head is too big in diameter to fit down in there. I tell you what, I relearn that little, little piece of information frequently, and I hate to admit it.
There you go. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Number one, before I forget. So you gotta set that bolt in there for the trim tab before you put the, the lower unit up because you still have to put the bolt in here and you have to turn the trim tab bolt through this hole right here. Now the reason they do that is to be a pain in the ass, I'm sure. But really what happens is you can adjust this to offset the torque of that prop trying to walk through the water. So typically you have it off a little bit this way because the prop's trying to turn this way and walk its way that way. So you use this to sort of offset just a little bit the torque. Now, this is the impeller that came out. And I put a new kit in. And I'm not going to go through all that because I happen to go by the theory is if you can't figure out how to take that apart and put another one in, you shouldn't be in there to begin with. Now, another thing you have to look for is a seal right here. Make sure that seal is down in there. I mean, there it goes. And basically, that's a seal for the exhaust. It's a molded rubber part, so you, you do want to get it down in there properly. Now, what I was talking about is this thing right here. If you look up in there, you're going to see this shaft right here, but then there's the shift shaft, which is a female spline that captures that male spline. And then underneath, there's a cam. Okay. And I'm going to put a light on it so you can see how it's oriented, because that's how you have to have it oriented if this thing is going to go back together. You see it right there? There's that cam down inside there. See how I have it oriented? It's when it's in forward gear, a couple of things. That splined shaft, there's going to be one of the splines facing forward. You have to have the cam back here so that this shaft, you see the one I'm wiggling with my hand? That can drop down. And when that drops down, it releases the latch. And what happens is when you take the gear selector and put it into neutral and then reverse, it rotates that cam that way, counterclockwise, and pushes up on this shaft here, which in turn locks the motor in that down position. So that's the nuance. You see how that is? It'll rotate just a little bit towards that direction before it hits a stop. And it'll rotate back just a little bit. But you have the two splines on either side kind of like parallel and then one spline forward. When you push it counterclockwise it goes into like a detent where if you push further it goes into neutral. That's where you put the splines. You put it in forward gear and you rotate it counterclockwise until it hits a stop where if you push past that it goes into neutral. And then you set the cam on to where you see the cam lobe, lobe where my finger is. Right there. Get that picture. So in forward gear, if you rotate forward, it's like that. Mine was sitting right about there. That's how you orient the shift shaft and the cam. And that cam is what releases the motor. Now what happens is when this shaft here drops down when it goes down that's what makes it go free when it gets pushed up that's what locks it and yet again when I look at this cam right there there's a pretty steep face and when it rotates counterclockwise it pushes that shaft up and that's what locks it in so when you put it in reverse the motor doesn't come flying back up and out of there now this piece of phenolic right here goes in this way it goes up the legs go up and what it does is it aligns the shifting shaft the female side spline and it also holds the shaft that does the lock and unlock of the lower unit you got to push that up inside 
where you've captured the two shafts before you, you start pushing the, the lower unit up. And sometimes it's better to have two people. I just put a whole bunch of grease on it. I'm going to see if I can get it up in there. And I think they call it an alignment bushing. And they call it an alignment bushing for a reason. Because if you do not have it properly, there's just no way that you're going to get this lower unit together. You can see the cam. See it down there? Where it's positioned. And then if you look up, you can see the alignment bushing where that comes through the forward hole and then the spline the spline for the shift shaft is is right there now once you got that alignment bushing in you've got this in forward gear you have the cam back here and forward gear meaning that one of those splines is facing forward and when you when you hit the prop it's locked going that direction. It's free this way, but it's locked going back because it's going to be pushing it this way. It'll be turning that prop clockwise and screwing through the water. So that's forward gear. That should go right back up in there. Now, if you turn this a little bit, it allows the, the drive shaft to align properly. Alright, let's see if we have gear shift first. Okay. If we go any further. Alright. That's forward. And then neutral. Neutral. Locked up. It's gotta be locked, locked both ways for reverse. Locked both ways for reverse. Alright, let me make sure the motor doesn't tip. locked. Let's go to forward and see if it's re released. We have a successful installation. Tighten everything up. And again, a couple of key points is you got to put the trim tab bolt in before you do all that. You got to line up that cam and that positioning bushing and then you also have to start these nut to right here before you tighten down the other ones because once this lower unit is all the way up you can't put those nuts on and once it's in you can't put that trim tab bolt in there those are things to think about